John chapter 12, verse number 1, six days. Before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nut, expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a what? Thief. He was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone. Jesus replied, it was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you. Look at your neighbor and say, but not me. Uh -huh. Come on. Mm -mm. There are going to be some poor people, but it won't be me. Come on. You will always have poor among you, but you will not always have have me all right i want you to back it up and get to luke chapter 10 go ahead and back it up and drop it all right luke chapter 10 uh, uh, man don't mess with me luke chapter 10 verse number 38 luke chapter 10 verse number 38 luke chapter 10 verse number what did i say luke chapter 10 verse Number 38, 38, here it is. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparation that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister, my trifling sister, crazy sister, lazy sister, has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but the few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her, the word of God for the people of God, thanks be unto God. You may be seated in the presence of God. Try to keep your left hand in John 12 and your right hand in Luke 10 and use your toes to take notes. How, how is that going to work? All right. All right. Try to keep one hand, your left hand, one hand in John 12. Darlene, I don't know how you're going to do it because you're typing with both hands. But put one hand in John, put the other one in Luke and somehow just get to take notes. And and for the time that I have, I want to preach from the subject. Y'all can read my jacket. All right. Uh, there's nothing like a sister. Can y'all read that? All right. What did I say? There is nothing. Can y'all read the jacket? Come on. Come on. Keep your eyes off the boots. Read the jacket. There is nothing. What did I say? There is nothing like a sister. If you sit sitting next to a sister, just go ahead and look at them and say, there is nothing like a sister. Mama, your flashlight is on. Turn your flashlight off on your phone. There is nothing. What did I say? There is nothing like a uh, sister, how many of you got some blood sisters? Got some blood sisters? All right, you got. All right, how many of you got some spiritual sisters? Got some spiritual sisters? And how many of you've got some people that they are just a sister in the spirit or they are sister through your struggles? Hey, listen, in the time of this pandemic and all the stuff that we are going through, all of us have learned one thing that is very important, and that it was. What really matters is people. Did y'all catch that? That because of this pandemic, the realization is what really matters is people. It's not about your car. It's not about your clothes. It's not about your crib. It's not about your cash. It's not about your cosmetic. What really matters is people. P.M. Smith says life is all about relationship or it ain't about nothing. Can I say that again? Life is 
is all about relationship or it ain't about nothing. Uh, that whenever you're going through whatever you're going through, uh, if you can go through it with some other people, uh, it is not as painful as it seems. Hello, somebody. Uh, that God intends and plans for you and I to be in some form of connection or some form of friendship or some form of relationship. It was God's idea. God said, it's not good for man to be alone. Now, I know when you all read that text, you assume it has to do with marriage, but it's bigger than marriage. He said, it's not good for you to go through life all by yourself. Life is more enjoyable and life is more fulfilling when you got somebody who is at least going through it with you. Uh, and life is even more enjoyable or more fulfilling when you got some sisters who are rolling with you. Uh, I mean, I said life is more enjoyable, life is more meaningful uh, when you've got people in your circle, when you've got people who don't mind going where you're going and celebrating where you're going. Uh, but life is even more enjoyable uh, when God connects you uh, with some sister who may not be your color but your kind uh, or some brother who may not be your color or your kind uh, and that's why I love the m and sisters. Ah, did y'all catch that? Uh, I love the m and sisters. That's my short version uh, for Martha and Mary. I call them the m and sisters. Uh, Martha and Mary were sisters in blood uh, but not only were they sisters Sisters in blood, but they were also sisters in burden. Ah, oh, come on in here. I said they were sisters because of blood, but they also were sisters because of burden. The Bible said six days. Somebody holler six days. Six days before the Passover. I'm in John chapter 12. Six days before the Passover, Jesus shows up. Six days before the Passover. And my goodness, I can pause parenthetically because all of us have to realize that in spite of all the people uh, who have lost their lives in the next, in the last 50 months or 16 months uh, that the Lord has allowed the dead angel uh, to pass over us. Am I talking to anybody uh, that you know that you should be dead and buried in your grave uh, but the Lord has allowed the dead angel uh, to pass over us. I need you to just wave over your head uh, and say God thank you for allowing it to pass over me. Uh, it stopped by somebody's house last night but it passed over me. Uh, the bullet hit somebody but it pass over me. Uh, the stuff could have killed me, but it passed over me. Uh, you see, every now and then you ought to just shout over the fact uh, that the Lord allows some stuff to pass over you. Uh, would you do me a favor and just do a flashback uh, and look over the last 16 months. Uh, somebody is a COVID survivor. Uh, somebody is a cancer survivor. Uh, somebody is a diabetes survivor. Uh, somebody is a heart attack survivor. Uh, and there is somebody at the sun to my voice who said it's only by the grace of God that the stuff has passed over me. If you can't shout over the Passover, you might as well leave church earlier. But is there anybody at the song of my voice who said I thank God that he is allowed Oh my God, he's allowed, he's allowed some stuff uh, to pass over. Just wave over your head. Uh, you could have lost your mind. Uh, you could have lost your strength. Uh, you could have lost your peace. Uh, but thank God he allowed it to pass over. Uh, my goodness, I've been to some places that I shouldn't have been. Uh, I've done some stuff that I shouldn't have done. Uh, he could have killed me a long time. Uh, but I thank God for the Passover. Uh, is there anybody don't mind clapping for the Passover? Uh, any Anybody don't mind stomping your feet for the Passover? Uh, somebody wave at me uh, and say, I thank God. I thank God. Uh. I thank God, I, I thank God, I, I thank God, I thank God, I thank God that six days, six days, I thank God, I thank God for the Passover. And, and, and Pastor Bird, you know the Bible said that when David was bringing the Ark of the Covenant, he took six steps and then he put a praise right there. Oh my God, y'all miss your cue right there. I need somebody to take six baby steps and put a praise right there. If you don't see day number seven, you ought to thank God that you made 
made it through the last six days. You made it through the last six minutes. You made it last through the six hours. I need you to put a praise right there. You don't have to wait for nobody to tell you shout. But if you made it through Monday, you made it through Tuesday, you made it through Wednesday, you made it through Thursday, you made it through Friday, and you made it through Saturday, guess what you ought to do on Sunday? You ought to put a praise. Put a praise. Why did the Bible? The Bible said six days. Somebody holler six days. Come on, say it like you really mean it. Six days. The Bible said six days before the Passover, Jesus shows up. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. And here there was a dinner that was given in honor, my goodness, of Jesus. And the Bible said that Martha serve while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Now when we get to John chapter 12, it's the end of the story actually. But if you back up, you understand that before we can see Lazarus at the table, we know Lazarus was in a tomb. Oh my God. I said the one who is at the table used to be in a tomb. Y'all ain't got it. I said the one who is at the table used to be at a to my God. The one who is alive used to be dead. The one who was blind can now see. I wonder if I got anybody at the sound of my voice who said, I haven't always been at the table. I used to be in a tomb, God. I said, I haven't always been able to see. I used to be blind. I haven't always been found. I used to be lost. So when we get to John chapter 12, they are having a celebration in honor of Lazarus because we know that first of all Lazarus was sick and they sent word to Jesus that the one whom you love is sick. Lazarus moved from being sick to now dead and not only is he dead but he's in a bowel or he's a buried tomb. Jesus shows up and raises Lazarus and the Bible said six days before the Passover, they are now having a celebration because Lazarus is no longer dead, but he is alive. And between John chapter 12 and Luke chapter 10, we are introduced to Lazarus sisters. We are introduced to the m and sisters by the name of Martha and Mary. We are both familiar with Martha and Mary because every time we study Martha and Mary, they are always doing the same thing. Martha is always serving and Mary is always sitting. Is there anybody in here? Just read through the gospel. Just study them. Google them and you will see the same thing. Martha is always serving and Mary is always sitting. I mean every time you see Martha she is in and out the kitchen. Every time you see Martha she's a usher. She's a greeter. She's on the parking or the praise team. Martha's love language is service. Did y'all catch that? Martha's love language is service. She demonstrates her love language or her love to her Savior by serving. Every time we see Martha, she's serving. And many of us have tried to do a comparison between Martha and Mary. And we have split the church. Half of the people say Martha is better than Mary. And then the deep people said, but yeah, but Mary sat under the word of God. But my boy Brothers and sisters, remember from the first sermon, uh, the gift of acceptance uh, is letting people do uh, who they are. Uh, Y'all got to get it. My goodness, you don't have to be Martha to show your love, uh, and you don't have to be Mary to show your love, uh, because both is needed in the kingdom of God. Uh, I wonder if I know somebody at the sound of my voice uh, who said, both is needed uh, to advance the kingdom of God. Uh, we can't have a full church of Mary, uh, who gonna turn the lights on? Uh, we can't have everybody being Mary, uh, who's gonna make sure the bathroom is clean? Uh, we can't always have Mary, uh, who's going to make sure that the hallway is clean? Uh, you ought to thank God for Martha. Uh, Martha makes sure there's good perfume in the bathroom. Uh, Martha makes sure the parking lot is clean. Uh, Martha makes sure there's no papers in the sanctuary. Uh, you see, what Jesus is trying to teach you and I uh, is that there is a time 
and there is a season for everything. Here is Martha and Mary, and they are bound together because they are sisters. Did y'all read my jacket? I did not say sister with an E-R. I said a sister with an A-H. Y'all get it? Because just cause you're my color don't mean you're my sister. Just cause you're my gender don't mean you're my sister. I know some people who are not my color, but they are my kind. And I know some people who are my kind and not my color. Uh, well, there is nothing like come on, y'all gotta say it like your sisters. Uh, there is nothing like there is nothing like a sister, Dr. Jazz. You're going to have to prove that to us. Well, from Martha and Mary's testimony and Martha and Mary's story, I see there are some unique things about sisters. That's why I appreciate my sister, Bishop Rosie O'Neill, and I appreciate my sister, my goodness, Pastor Vanessa Bird, because while I got 20 other male preachers in my phone, and I love being around the brothers who preach the gospel, there is nothing like a sister. Uh, there's some things I learned about a sister in both of the texts. Uh, here it is. I'll give it to y'all. Then we're going to get out of here. Uh, first of all, remember now, a sister, first of all, is connected to you. What's the first one? A sister is what? A sister is connected to you. Hello, somebody. A sister is connected to you and not curious about you. Okay, y'all got to catch it. A sister is connected to you and not curious about you. There are some people who are in your life out of curiosity. They want to see if you all that a bag of chips and some dip. But a true sister already know you're all that a bag of chips and some dip. You want a sister who's connected to you and not curious about you. Oh, my God. The Bible says that Martha and Mary we are connected. Uh, and here is how they are connected, Cornelia. First of all, they are connected by blood. Give me the word blood, 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 blood. Uh, they are connected by what? Blood. Uh, that means they've got the same mother and the father. Uh, they are connected by blood. Uh, and there are some sisters uh, who are in your life who are your blood. Who are your blood sisters? But secondly, not only are they connected by blood, but they are connected by burden. What's number two? How are they connected by what? Burden, burden. You know what a burden is? They are connected to you to help you carry your burden. You see, everybody who is a sister cannot carry your burden. But God has strategically connected you with some people that is going to be a burden carrier. Uh, Galatians chapter 6 verse number 2 says uh, that we ought to bear one another burden. Uh, I don't know how y'all do it in this pandemic, uh, but just go ahead and touch the person's shoulder uh, and say you ain't got to carry that burden by yourself. Uh, you ain't got to raise those children by yourself. Uh, you don't have to have that surgery by yourself. Uh, you don't have to be frustrated by yourself. Uh, you don't have to struggle by yourself. Uh, the Lord will connect you with some of the sisters uh, who will help you carry your burden. Uh, so when you can't pray, they will pray for you. Uh, when you can't shout, they will shout for you. Uh, when you cry, you don't have to cry alone. Uh, is there anybody at the song of my voice uh, who can testify the only reason uh, you haven't lost your mind uh, is because the Lord uh, connected you with a sister uh, who helped you carry your burden. Uh, I wish I had a real church in Cornelia who can testify if it wasn't for that sister I would have lost my mind if it wasn't for that sister I would have gone crazy if it wasn't for that sister I might have gone up somebody but I thank God that the Lord has assigned some sisters who will help me carry my burden who am I preaching to I said, who am I preaching to? Who's got a sister in your iPhone? I need you to do me a favor and go ahead and get your iPhone out or get your Android out and go into your connect list and pull up that sister and I want you to send them a text and tell them my pastor or Pastor Jazz is preaching about you because if it wasn't for you, I would have gone crazy. But at the right time, at the right season, at the right hour, 
power the Lord sent you connected you with me so I can carry this burden. Many people don't know how Bishop and I really met. I had just finished preaching for Woman Dow at Loose Mega Fest. I had just finished preaching. And you know, whenever you are on those high platforms, you have more haters than celebrators. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I had just finished preaching for Woman Die Loose and Megafest, and my God, they came for me. You know, talk, I mean, they came for me. Everything they can throw at me, they came for me. My goodness, they talked about me like a dog. Run my name through the street. They said she ain't no one need to bind them. White T.D. Jakes got her up there. I mean, and I started reading the press, uh, and I started feeling some way about it, uh, and so I locked myself in my house, uh, stayed in my closet, decided I ain't coming out, uh, because this was my first major engagement. Uh, I was looking forward to, my goodness, getting all the report from other people, uh, and I found out my number one haters were sisters. Uh, who can I preach up in here? Uh, it wasn't the brothers, it was people who were my color and my kind uh, of the sisters talking about me. Uh, didn't like my makeup, didn't like my shoes, didn't like my earrings. Uh, thought I thought was arrogant and conceited. Uh, and every time I read social media, my strength went down. Uh, my emotion energy went down. Uh, I mean, they were coming after me uh, from obnoxious to Larry Reed. Uh, they talked about me like a dog uh, on every blog and every social media. Uh, I put a towel over my face, locked myself in my house and my closet, and I said, I ain't never going to step in another pulpit. But there was some bishop from Cornelia found my number and called me and said, this is Bishop O'Neill. I said, how can I help you, Bishop? She said, the Lord told me to call you and let you know there is more for you than there are against you. And I said, but Bishop, don't you know what they're saying about me? She said, I'm going to walk with you through it. I'm going to go through it with you. I wish I had somebody in here who don't mind shouting over the fact that the Lord will send the right person who will stand with you, who will encourage you, who will let you know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. I need somebody to open your mouth and thank God for the sisters that God has connected you with to help you carry your burden. Come on, push on your sister's back and say, you ain't gonna have to carry it by yourself. Come on, push on their back and say, you ain't gonna have to carry it by yourself. You don't have to go through it by yourself. Somebody is having surgery. Somebody got to go through radiation. Somebody got to bury a loved one. But I'm so glad that God will send the right person. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right here. I said, God will send the right person. We'll connect you with them and they will help you carry your burden. Martha and Mary, Martha and Mary are connected by blood, but by burden. They're not just connected, Lady Vanessa, not just by blood, but by They lost Lazarus. Both sisters knows about grief. Both sisters knows about a broken heart. Both sisters knows what it is to call on Jesus and it seemed like he took his time. Both sisters know what it is to experience radiation and chemotherapy and that's why you can't be silent. Dad, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's why you you can't you can't be silent because if you're silent, you're gonna make us think everything is all right. My God, we know it's not all right. You see, the trick of the enemy is to let you suffer in isolation. Uh, I gotta get out of here. I said the trick of the enemy is to let you suffer in isolation. Uh, I want y'all to know you gonna know when I'm going through. Uh, I, I said you got yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not gonna post it. I'm just gonna share it. Hello, somebody. 
somebody. You're going to know when I'm going through something because the trick of the enemy is to make you and I be so isolated to think that we're going through it by ourselves. But the Bible said in Revelation, and they overcame Satan. My God, I felt that Pentecostal. I said they overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Who somebody needs to know what a survivor look like. Somebody needs to know what an overcomer looks like. Somebody needs to know what somebody who's been raped looks like after. Somebody needs to know after you've been through a divorce, there is still life. Somebody needs to know that after a foreclosure, there's still life. Somebody needs to know after surgery, there is still life. And you didn't look at your neighbor and say, look at me. If you want to know what a survivor looks like, you ain't got to talk to Destiny Child or Beyonce. You're sitting right next to somebody. Is there anybody at the song of my voice who can testify that you survived something? Come on, look at them. Say, if you want to know what a survivor feel like, reach out and touch them. Say, if you want to know what a survivor shout like, just give me five seconds. Is there anybody at the song of my voice? Are there any survivors in here this morning? Act like you're at the Jay-Z concert and wave at me. Throw something at me. Holler at me. But if you survive something, the least you ought to do is throw your head back, open your mouth, and tell the devil, I survived. Are there any survivors in the house? Holler back at me and tell your neighbor, I'm a survivor. I said, I'm a what are you? What are you? What are you? What are you? But you're not just a survivor. You are overcomer. Come on up in here. I need somebody to shout with me and say I'm an overcomer. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word. By the word of their testimony. Here, here's number two, 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 Christy. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, there's nothing, there is nothing like a sister because a sister, there's nothing like a sister because a sister connect, a sister connect, but there's nothing like a sister because a sister corrects. What did I say? A, a sister, what? A sister, correct. I, I think you can go like, look, look, look in the Luke passage and the Luke passage. You know, Martha and Mary, Martha is serving and Mary is sitting right in the Luke passage and, and Jesus is reclining and Martha is cooking and she's coming out and she's bringing the peach cobbler and she's bringing the fried fish and she's bringing the collard green and she's checking out, she's checking out Mary, you know. I mean, Martha is running around making sure the utensils and everything is in place and she's checking out, she's checking out Mary. She assumed by now Mary can read, you know, read and you might want to get up and help me. You know, I mean, it's Jesus and all these other disciples around you. You would think, you would think, right? You would think, hello, sister, girlfriend. You'll think you'll put on your concordance and come help me. Uh, you think you'll put on your Bible and come help me. But no, no, no. Here's Martha. Martha approaches Jesus and she said, Lord, don't you care that Mary has left me to do all the work. Oh, oh, God, don't you care, don't you care, don't you care that Mary hasn't left a finger to help me. Oh, how Christy, a sister, a, a, a sister connect, but a sister corrects also. Ooh, oh, my goodness. Now, now many of y'all know, I, I know Bishop O'Neill for over 14 years. I'm just getting to know Pastor Vanessa Bird. And, and I said to her a couple of weeks ago, I said, what can I do that will pluck your nerves? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I want to know right now because I don't want to try to do it, you know. I, you know, I want to purposely avoid it. I'm sure I already plucked her nerve a thousand times. I'm sure I did like I pluck Bishop nerve and a Bishop plucks my nerve. <laughs> we we pluck each other's nerve, but what it is is a sister 
not only connects, but her sister correct. And you don't, oh God, this is going to bless at least a thousand of y'all on Facebook. Uh, you don't know the strength of your relationship until you have a fallen out. Yeah. Oh God, y'all didn't hear me. Oh my God, anybody, anybody can be your friend. Uh, my goodness, when you ain't correcting them, anybody can like you. Uh, where, oh, I wish I can talk to some pastors and preachers and prophets. Uh, oh, pastor, you my pastor until I correct you. Uh, oh, pastor, you my bishop until I correct you. Uh, oh, pastor, you the anointed one of God. Uh, you've been sent from God. Uh, you've got a word in your belly for me. Uh, the Lord has used you uh, to bring me out of darkness. Uh, and I'll just be playing that violin. Uh, because as soon as I correct them, uh, now I ain't the pastor. Uh, I'm not the anointed one. Uh, I'm not the bishop and the apostle no more. It's because that's a casual relationship. Uh, and not a committed one. God help me. Uh, and in this season, in this season, uh, I don't need casual relationship. Uh, I need some committed people. Uh, I need some people who said, I'll go where you go. Uh, I'll lodge where you lodge. Uh, I'll sleep where you sleep. Uh, I'll die where you die. Uh, because in this season, uh, the two things I cannot waste. Uh, I cannot waste time. I wish I had somebody there. And I cannot waste people. Uh, I need as much time as I can get. Uh, and I need the best people in my life. Uh, and one of the ways that you know it's a sister uh, is because you can correct them uh, and an hour after uh, you can say let's go to KFC uh, I wish I had some real people in the building uh, who said the only way I know they love me uh, is because when I was going down the wrong path uh, when I was trying to hook up with the wrong person uh, when I was trying to do the wrong thing uh, they stepped in and rebuke me. I know you all shouted over the connection but you ought to thank God that they corrected you. They saved your life. Is there anybody out there who said I had a sister that took my keys because if they didn't take my keys I would have ended up in the wrong house and in the wrong bed but I thank God that they, I wish I had somebody real in here. Is there anybody in here who said I want to thank God that the sister became my designated driver is there anybody in here who say I thank God for a sister who looked beyond my fault and saw my need and didn't mind correcting me there is nothing there is nothing like a sister, because a sister. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How many of you? How many of you? I think she's sleeping. How many of you ever been corrected by Bishop? I mean, she's smooth with it, right? You don't even know she's doing it. And then you get off the phone. You're like, did she just, did she just smoothly rebuke me? I mean, you know what I'm saying like that. Yeah, 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 because you see, because when 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 your sister or anybody corrects you, it lets you know that they care about you. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please don't let me walk around with a booger in my nose. Hello, somebody. Please don't let me walk around with my eyelashes over my on my forehead. Come on now. Anyway, you know, you need a sister to say, I see you try to make your makeup by yourself today. Yeah, because, yeah, 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 I, 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 I see you trying to dress yourself today, and you know you're colorblind. Because a true sister correct, and I love what Martha, she said, Lord, psst, 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 Lord, don't you care? You, you see, this is why I love Martha, because Martha ain't just going to step on Mary, because Martha might know Mary going to jump off. She's the quiet ones that's crazy. Oh, y'all know your head. I said, it's the quiet ones that's crazy. So she just stepped to Jesus and said, Lord, don't you, uh, don't you, uh, don't you, don't you care. But she's loud enough so Mary can hear it. Y'all yeah. 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 ain't hearing me. She's loud enough. She's saying it to Jesus. But you know how sisters talk, Christy. You know, I'm really talking, it's like, you know, Bishop O'Neill and Bishop Bud, and we all on the phone together. And I'm really talking to O'Neill, but I'm trying to tell something to Bishop Bud. But, you know, I, I ain't going to step to Bishop Bud because I'm just getting to know her. I don't know if she can fight. I don't want to beat her up in her own city and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saving sanctified. So what I do is I call Bishop O'Neill, and I know Bud is over listening to car. 
I said, girl, but it ain't got nothing in her refrigerator. I'm messing with y'all. I'm messing with y'all. She going to kill me right here. All I'm trying to, I said, girl, I said, bud, uh, O'Neal is not going to be here when I preach on Sunday. Now, I really want to rebuke O'Neal, but, I, you know, I can't rebuke the bishop. And so, so I'm telling Bud, I said, girl, she invite me to her pulpit. She's not even going to be here or anything like that. All I'm trying to say is the strength of relationship is built on when you can correct one another, when you can share your concern for one another. Is anybody in here? I, I need somebody to just holler back in me. I know you're telling the truth because when your relationship can stand correction, then you know it's on a firm foundation. I need somebody to raise your right hand and say, God, deliver me from oversensitive people catch it. I said, God, deliver me uh, that if I step on their feet, they leave church. Uh, if I just look at them the wrong way, they stop, they block me. Uh, God, come on, raise your hand. Uh, God, deliver me uh, from oversensitive people uh, because when you are secure in who you are, uh, you can take a correction because you know uh, the foundation of the correction uh, is not chastisement, uh, but rather, my goodness, it's love. Uh, and the scripture said in Hebrews uh, that the love changed those he love. I want to shout right here for when the Lord chased me, when the Lord spanked me, when the Lord disciplined me. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here who said, I thank God that he loved me so much enough that when he saw me going down the wrong path, when he saw me going down the wrong way, he snatched me. I wish I had some real people up in here who can testify that if the Lord hadn't snatched you, if the Lord hadn't stopped it, if the Lord hadn't shut it down, if the Lord made sure the car didn't start, if the Lord made sure he relocated, if the Lord made sure that he wasn't wrong, you would have been pregnant again by the same joker. But thank God he didn't just bless me, but he blocked it. I need a thousand people in here who said this shout is not for the blessing, it's for the blocking. I need somebody to open in your mouth and say God I thank you for blocking it is there anybody in here who said I thank God that he blocked it because if he didn't block it I would have jacked up my life I would have gone crazy but slap five with somebody and said this shout is not just for the blessing it's for the blocking I know that's too real for some of y'all because you've always been saved you've always been sanctified you've always been holy ghost here but there's a thousand of y'all who said when I tried to snatch the weed I didn't have a matches when I tried to get in the bed I didn't have gas in my car when I tried to go wrong he stand me the right way I need somebody to open your mouth and say I want to shout that he blocked it even when I didn't want him to my God, we got to get out of here. I said, we got to get out of here. But give your name a virtual five and say, I'm shouting over the blessing, but I'm shouting over the blocking. I thank God he blocked the bullet. He blocked the drug. He blocked COVID. He blocked the struggle. I need somebody to say, block it, block it, block it. I need somebody to scream and say, God, I thank you that you blocked it because I would have gone crazy I would have lost my mind I would have been jacked up but I thank I say I thank you I say I thank you there is nothing there is nothing there is nothing there is nothing like a sister she connects with you my god she corrects you but before i go to my seat i see one more thing in the text the bible says six days before the passover jesus was in the same house and at the table was lazarus and there was mary and there was martha and the mary who never stood up a day in her life decided that she got to do something. She took an alabaster oil. She breaks it and begins to anoint the feet of Jesus because a real sister 
not only connects with you, uh, a real sister uh, not only corrects you, uh, but a real sister uh, knows how to celebrate uh, with you. Uh, I need you to look down your row uh, and say, neighbor, uh, I got enough haters uh, on my job. Uh, I got enough haters uh, in my bed. Uh, I got enough haters uh, in the mall. Uh, but I need a sister uh, who don't mind celebrating. I said I need a sister who don't mind celebrating. A real sister will shout for you. A real sister will scream with you. A real sister will holler with you. So do a road check and say, neighbor, it's not my birthday. It's not my anniversary. But I woke up this morning and because I'm alive, I need somebody to shout with me. I've been through a storm. I've been through a heartache. I've been through a struggle. But I'm alive. Don't make me shout by myself. Don't make me shout by myself. Don't make me scream by myself. Don't make me dance by myself. Would you celebrate like it's your breakthrough? Like it's your... Like it's your miracle, like it's your blessing, like it's your deliverance. You can shout and celebrate. Another sister, another sister. There is nothing, there's nothing like a sister. Because you know what I love? Here's the thing, I'm through, come on, stand. Here's the thing. Martha, oh gosh, when Martha corrected Mary, here's the crazy thing. Mary, I believe, overheard it, but she didn't do anything about it because here's a bonus. There's nothing like a sister because a sister covers you. Look at your sister say, I got your back. In fact, do me a favor, just turn your back on them and say, I got, I got you, I got you. I, I got you. I got you. I got your back. And on October the 17th, we get to tell one of the baddest sisters. And October 17th, we get to tell the baddest sister. One of the baddest preacher, prophet, teacher, evangelist on October the 17th. We get to tell that sister. Thank you, God, for connecting us. As painful as it is, thank you, God, for using her to correct us. We get a chance to celebrate her anniversary and then thank God for her. Thank God for her covering us. You know what blows my mind about the text I'm getting ready to preach? Is while Martha talks to Jesus about Mary, hey, would you please tell her to come and help me? I'm sure Mary overheard it, but Mary doesn't even say nothing. You know, I would have. Martha, you talking about me? I told you I don't do dishes. She doesn't do anything. Why? Because she covers. She covers Martha. And then six days later, when Mary takes her bobby pins out and let her weave down and begin to do all the stuff she does to Jesus, Martha doesn't say, why is Mary doing all of that? Because she covers her. And I love this one passage. It says, and Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. The same love he has for Martha, same love he has for Mary, same love he has for Lazarus. I'm praying that God will send you some real authentic sisters. 
The Bible says, the Bible said, if you want to have a friend, you have to show yourself. So honestly, is how have you been doing in connecting? And I know you're connected to iPhone. I know you're connected to Facebook and YouTube and IG. But don't 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 lose the real connection. A connection with God and a connection with you. I need you. And you need me. And we are part of God's family. I don't know how you do it in this space or this during the pandemic. Maybe you've been hurt by a sister. God knows we all have. And the truth be told, you've hurt a sister. See, everybody who walked out of your life ain't crazy. I've had some good people in my life walked out because I didn't value what they brought to the table. And now in my 50s, God has restored what the locusts and the cones can to work. I got some sisters. I got, I say, I got a golfing buddy. We go golfing. And then I got a shopping buddy. Y'all figure out which one is the shopper and the golfer. But I got some sisters who connects, corrects, celebrate, and ultimately they cover me with their prayer. I'm not going to pray for your finance. I'm praying that God would just send you some amazing friends. If that's who we are. Raise your hands all over. God, we don't need no more foes. We don't need no more fake pages. We just thank you for the authentic friendships. And God, I know for women... So many of us as women say, I don't want to be bothered with other women. But God, I pray that in this season that you will send the right sisters who will cover them through what they're going through. And God, wherever we are falling short, we ask that you'll give us the grace and the strength. There's somebody who's right now, you haven't connected with a sister the last 60 days. You haven't seen her. You haven't talked to her. You haven't reached out to her. And God told me to tell you when this service is over, you need to. You need to. You need to. You had a disagreement, an argument. Didn't see eye to eye. God told me to tell you, make, make amends with that sister. Make amends with that sister. Might be a blood sister, might be a, a spiritual sister. Make amends with them. I'm from a family of five boys and two girls, and my sister passed away three years ago without having a conversation with me. One piece of property got in the middle of the whole family. And they were fighting in a lawsuit. And the boys was on this side and she was on this side. And, and dies without even saying anything to us. Don't let possession or position or anything get between you and people because if this pandemic has taught us anything is that life is all about relationship or it ain't about nothing and yes you're going back to work and going back to school and getting back out there and doing all those amazing things but don't get so busy that you lose connection with the people that really, really matters. Bishop and I have a weekly standard 
call. We check in. Pastor Bird and I, weekly standard call. Because we're committed to connect, to correct, to celebrate, and to ultimately cover. I pray that God will send you some authentic sisters because there's nothing your healer your healer